Fright House Networks present the Fright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week. Well, a very, very special good evening, Kern County. Welcome to High School Football Game of the Week exclusively on Bright House Network's Bakersfield. My name is Vance Palm, and I am with, as always, my partner, Brian Adams. And you are looking at the Olympic gold medal champion, our very own Bakersfield High School driller, Jake Varner. And tonight has already been absolutely on fire when it comes to the energy here. Forget about the prototypical words we use. It's a buzzing. You can feel that it. it's palpable. I'm just going to say it's on fire tonight, Brian Adams. Well, Vance, it's been a long time since you've had a game like this of two programs of this magnitude in this city coming together. This reminds me of the old times, Vance, and the saying old we're talking about 90 88 87 86 85 you know when the uh, garces was winning titles and the drillers were trying to come back to prominence the garces rams undefeated come downtown to play bakersfield high school also undefeated some would say that two very different undefeated teams when it comes to who the opponents have been but nevertheless, both teams coming in without a loss this season. Garces has a leading quarterback in the area in Cruz Adams. Cruz Adams has just been lighting it up. Bunch of touchdowns, bunch of yards, game-winning drives. So Cruz Adams making a name for himself. And then, of course, the Bakersfield High School drillers, you look at them in the stats book, and nobody's in the top seven or eight or top ten in some categories. It's a driller team trying to make a run for a state championship. Well, Vance, I think one thing about it, I was fortunate to be allowed in the locker room and listen to the pregame of Coach Gola. It's about team. It's about each individual man taking responsibility for themselves and their assignment and playing together as one. Because, Vance, they don't care about who gets the touchdowns, who gets the stats, how high you rank. It's strictly, Vance, win and just win. Jake Varner walking off the field to another round of applause. Hey, you're talking about three, 4,000 people here uh, tonight. Standing ovation, and he has now become a global U.S. wrestling icon. Jake Varner starting things off. Nice to have a driller in your home field, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Vance, you know, that's what it's about, the driller mystique, the driller heritage. You know, just very dominant in multiple sports, and here young Jake Varner is representing not only Bakersfield, Bakersfield High, and the United States of America, but getting that gold medal, as you said, Vance, the last event of the Olympics. Well, here we are. Week three, high school football game of the week, and it's the Drillers hosting the Rams, and we're in for a big one. Again, Brian Adams next to me. I'm Vance Palm, and we are really really excited for this game tonight we're always excited to call the game but when it gets to be that the game of the week is one of the most talked about games in the valley it takes on a little bit of extra special meaning so we look forward to bringing it to you this evening the drillers will kick off and um it's gonna be one of those nights brian one of those nights where a couple of big plays define a couple of big players and it might be where one player runs away with it as player of the game or one team decides to make it just kind of a collective effort so the drillers will kick off as we're about to get rolling here very festive evening with jake varner olympic gold medalist in wrestling and former bhs driller comes out to a raucous standing ovation and the coin toss and we're underway and wow this this is <laughs> Pretty loud, loud atmosphere tonight. Here we go. We're underway. It's up. And it's deep. So it'll be first and ten 
for the Garces Rams. And you know, fans, right there, Parker Campbell, probably the best kicker in the area. One of the Alvarez projects. Just booted in the end zone. But you know what I like about him? I got to tease our friend Mateo. He plays defense, fans, a real football player. Already a zinger at one of our former colleagues. I'll take it. First and 10 for the Garces Rams. Cruz Adams, leading quarterback in the area in the shotgun, takes it. Flicks it out to the right side. Nice little cut inside. Nice move. A good play to get started there. It's caught out there by Angus Ballou. You know, and Angus Ballou is one of those big main targets. Vance had, had 150 yards in one of the games. He's going to be really uh, vital for this team today. Great hands, run solid routes. And they have to be able to move the sticks and get also Sheldon Crony involved. He has the athleticism to match up with the drillers. All right, hand off to the left side, and this is taken by Hunter Barnes. And you know, Vance, right there, you see Hunter Barnes picking up a few yards and let it be third down and possibly about one. But you know, one thing is hard to run against the drillers, Vance. They move and swarm to the ball. The D linemen you'll watch, they won't get on the ground in a neutral three-point or four-point stance. They'll stay standing up, and you never know what gap the guys are going to go through. Hey, look at this. Third and three. Nice big third down to start things off. Adams sends Crony Jr. in motion. Adams takes the shotgun. Looks. Flies one out there. Has a man wide open. Just overthrows him. And the green and gold crowd up on their feet. Let out a collective Oh, Angus Ballou was 10 yards past his defender, but it's a moot point. The ball was overthrown by well, Vance, 10 yards. Right here, you're going to see Jeremiah Derrick. He's going to cause that pressure, force the ball be Ooh. thrown just a little bit early. And this is what Reddick, I'm sorry, Jeremiah Reddick. And this is what Garces has to have. They have to hit on those big plays. They, they may not get that many chances. Fourth and three, they're going to have to boot the football. Garces took a shot early. Coach Maples went downtown, had a man open, just overthrew him. Keep and Cruz away. Adams will punt. Adams, there nice you go. long Good punt. deep punt. Pretty much a beauty right there. And Vance, that's a good, smart punt right there by Cruz. He doesn't give Kevin a chance, Kevin Hayes a chance to make a big play. Last time we saw the drillers, we saw Kevin Hayes single-handedly come out here against Centennial and make some big plays and turn the game around for the drillers. Well, first and 10, the drillers will have it on their own 25. So not a bad opening series for the Rams and a beautiful punt by Adams brings it down to the 25. So now let's see what the drillers could do. Their first play from the line of scrimmage at home this year in Bakersfield. They've been on the road the first two weeks. So they're probably looking forward to a nice start here at home. The quarterback, Asania Rufus, Rufus. And there's some motion, Brian. You know, it looks like Vance like it's gonna be a little bit of a procedure against the drillers. You know, and Vance, one thing you gotta say if you guard is take advantage of those five yards. Played the field position game. Of course. Rufus right behind center. And it's Rufus. He hands the ball up the middle, and it's a big, big run. Helmets popping off. And uh, that young gentleman probably going to have to leave the game for one play, and it's Taylor. Keone Taylor, a 6'3", 290-pound senior. Got to leave the field for one play. Helmet popped off. And that's Reddick right there running strong with the ball, Vance. And he's almost able to pick up those five yards they lost. Actually got, gained a yard from the original line of scrimmage. Third and two. Sorry, second and two. And nice run. Vickers on the run. Derek Vickers had a nice season last year as a sophomore. Well, Vance, they had about six sophomores play, so these guys all have great experience. And here's the thing. You get Reddick going up the middle, Vickers here on the outside, reading the run well, cutting up the field, and then Rufus to keep it, and he can run the, down the ball down his throat. Reddick 
right behind Rufus. Handoff up the middle. Nice job by that Ram defense. What an atmosphere. Griffith Field, BHS. We're downtown Bakersfield on a perfect, perfect September evening here in Bakersfield. Absolutely jam-packed. There's not a seat left in the house. <laughs> it is a big night down here in Bakersfield. First and 10. They should be. Okay, it's first and 10. They got it at the 35-yard line. They want to go to the air. Fires across the middle. Oh, then he was open. Not quite sure what happened there because Hayes, the ball got past the defender. It looked like Hayes would say, hey, what happened? Well, watch here. We'll see, see if we can see it. But you're going to see Ruth does a good job pump fake. Hayes wants the call on him, but it kind of stops on the play thinking he should get a flag call. But he's got to run through that. He runs through, catches it. It's going to be six because they're not going to catch him. Second and ten. Right behind the center is Rufus. Handoff goes up the middle. Nice run. Pretty good tackle. And don't have a name or number for number 30. He doesn't have a name on the back of his jersey either. We're going to have to try to do some reconnaissance on that. But, uh, yeah, we don't have his name, but good run right there. Third down, and coaches want motion. I think they're going to get it. Big play from this Ram defense, so great tackles, great action. And here's a decision by Coach Maples. Do you decline the penalty and make him go fourth and short? Well, I think or he's going to decline it, but you got to be careful with Gola because Gola will – he kind of like that old Pete Carroll. He'll take a chance on fourth downs, Vance, especially when it's this short. He has a lot of confidence in his team. And I think Coach Maples is uh, going to take the risk here. He's going to take the risk and decline it and make it fourth and short from the BHS 44-yard line. So, Brian, here we go. As you say, Coach Gola says, fine, we'll go fourth and four. And Maple said, let's see on a fourth and two. Sorry, fourth and two. So a big fourth down play here in the first quarter. And when it lines up, Rufus behind center. Hard count, nobody jumps. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. No first down. And that's Jack Aspaugh, man. This does a great job of coming off that edge and stuffing. Number 30 right. Oh, you almost bobbled the ball. Bobbled Never had the, the ball football. clean, Vance. And a great job right there by the Garces Rams defense. But again, Coach Gola says, don't sweat it. I got the best defense in the section, possibly in the state. Let's roll the dice. So interesting turn of events early. A bobbled handoff on a fourth and two on their own 42. The Rams hold them. And now Rams have a first and 10. On about the 43, Cruz Adams, the quarterback in the shotgun, has three receivers to the right. Here come the drillers. Adams lets one go. Again, has a man, this time just over the outstretched fingers of Jacob Sweeney. Jacob Sweeney, a top baseball prospect in the state of California, already be hunting down by a bunch of Pac-12 schools. And Sweeney almost had that one. So Cruz Adams slinging him. He is slinging him, but he has to start getting accurate. But I will tell you this, Vance. One thing we are not seeing from the Garces Rams is any fear of these vaunted drillers. That's a great point, Brian. You know, you hear so much about the preseason schedule of the drillers, and they are BHS, and Jake Varner's here tonight. Big game. They're on TV. And uh, I think that has everything to do with their head coach, Jim Maples. Again, second and ten. Drillers show blitz. Adams looks. Adams in trouble, shakes one off. Cruz Adams trying to get to the outside. Takes a couple of big hits. He's wrapped up and gets about four yards. No, Vance, and good decision by Cruz right there. 
He was thinking about throwing the ball, decided to keep the ball down. You'll see right here, he wants to do a little pump and see if they can get the guy to bite, but the pressure forces him to come up in the pocket. That's a good now just pick, getting up field and trying to get some positive yardage and was able to pick up about four yards, Vance. Third and I would say six or seven. We're not able to get the yardage to go on the scoreboard, so it's just an eyeball deal that we're doing. Looks like about third and seven. Adams shotgun ever since the game has started. In motion, he sends Dominic Frash. He goes to Frash out of the wing. Frash is going to have to do something special. Frash trying to get to the first down marker. Takes a big hit. Gets awfully close. Dominic Frash. You know, and Thrash is one of their big playmakers, Vance, a 4-4-40 guy. He saw his quickness right here in his agility. Now watch this, Vance. A little hesitation on Campbell. Now the acceleration. Campbell's a good job of having some kind of angle forces him to get some body contact. Good job by Hayes coming up to stop him, stop him short of fourth. But now you see Jimmy Matables, and he's another gunslinger. So we have two coaches, Vance, that have all their six shooters ready. Coach Maples on a fourth and one from the Drillers 34 yard line. Let's see what they've got going. First time that Cruz Adams is behind the center. They go for the handoff right at the Touchdown. middle. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Connor Polofsky, touchdown Garces. Vance has a quick hit dive up the middle. Where's the linebackers? Where's the safety? Everybody's gone. And Karlovsky goes in for the touch. Easy six. And that's what you want to do. You got to get up on the drillers. See if you can put some pressure on them. But again, the drillers are used to this. We saw them last year in the playoffs against Centennial. They don't panic. The coach doesn't panic. And we might be in for a shootout, partner. We'll see. Reed Robertson. For the PAT, the high snap, the catch, it's up, it's good. Seven to nothing. The Garces Memorial High School Rams are able to pick up a big, big touchdown on a fourth and one. And the Rams off to a seven nothing lead. Here's another look at that replay, Brian. All right, see, I'm saying in advance, they got blocked in. Great job in the line blocking. We don't talk much about the line too often, but what a job of filling off and opening up that hole. And then the over pursue and great vision by Karlovsky to make the cutback, Vance. Woo! Wow. And it's not as though the drillers need wake up calls. But Coach Gola, in Zach Ewing's article today, mentioned that, you know, this could be one of those trap games if you're not careful. And sometimes that can be taken two ways as if he's trying to subliminally say that, hey, we're okay, we got it. But other times the, the, the team that's the underdog can look at that and say, hey, he's right. We might be able to catch him here. Either way, it's 7-0, early goings. And that's why he brought in... Pat Scrabble, the Hall of, BHS Hall of Famer. Pat Preston, the BHS Hall of Famer. To explain to these young guys who haven't really witnessed this, even as junior high kids wouldn't have seen it, and to understand that how bad Garces wants to beat the drillers. You know, it's kind of like, I hate to use this analogy, the Trojans being the drillers, and uh, my mighty little Bruins, the gutty little Bruins trying to beat USC. Long kick deep in the end zone, and away it goes. I also... Saw Marshall Dillard on the sidelines this evening. So a who's who of former drillers to go in and have a word with everybody in there. And you know, Marshall's another Hall of Famer from the drillers. Great running back under Coach Briggs and then going on to Stanford and played well. So now he's a local principal and that just really, you know, embodies what it means to be a student athlete in the highest sense. You know, he goes to school like Stanford. Now he's an educator leading young people in our community. Okay, partner. First and 10 on the 20 for the drillers to see if they can get something going here. They're going to go right up the middle. They're going to pound it and grind it up the middle. And how's that for a nice 20 yard gain right after they've been scored on? Well, that's Jeremiah Reddick, and he's the linebacker running back. And I just like how tough he is, Vance. He covers the ball up well and just keeps his feet going no matter what. He gets hit up high. He still goes, runs through, and he picks up, like you said, Vance, almost 20 yards. Yeah. 
grind it up the middle again. This time the Rams are waiting for it. Host of Rams in on the tackle. You know, man, so not like so far what I'm seeing with Garth is they're playing good assignment football. Every time Rufus Vance comes out, you see there's a Garces Ram right in his face. They're not taking any chances that he just fakes that dive and then goes around the outside. Pitch. Didn't happen. And Vance, you see right there, Cameron Pacheco, and that's what you just call being disciplined, Vance. One guy goes to the quarterback, the other guy goes, and he takes the pitch. You see Rufus on the ground, running back on the ground. That's textbook football. Third and long, let's say 12, third and 12. Rufus right behind center, takes a look, rolls to his right, has traffic, decides to throw it up there, and has a man, and it's picked up. Patrick Sikowski with the interception and then a late hit on the sidelines. So the flag comes out. And right now things going swimmingly for the Rams. Now what happens, Vance, when you're rolling off like that and you stare at that receiver, the corner has an ability to read it. We saw that last week, in the, uh, no, two weeks ago, in the Ridgeview Frontier game. So he's able to come off and make that interception an easy pick. And Brian, a little salt on the wound there, a late like a flag for a late hit. And, you know, this is not really what you want to give the visiting team when they're when they're this fired up already. But this is what makes it a great football game for a spectator. Well, Vance, the one thing about it, like we said, Garces is not scared. When any time you're trying to pull off an upset, one thing you want to do is get up early. Get the momentum rolling. Get Mr. Moe on your side. And right now, Garces has that. I think Garces has to capitalize on this and get this game up 14 nothing, and put pressure on the drillers. See if you can get the drillers to do things out of character like that late hit. All right. Adams with the shotgun. Sends Ballou in motion right across him. Takes a look. Feeling nope. the pressure. Throws one out right. into the corner. This time it's going to be a misguided pass, and that's inter intercepted right back into the driller's hands. So on a first and 10, not what Coach Maples is looking for. Well, Vance, one thing he has when I'm saying he's open, you have to understand and read your receiver and your quarterback. And Vance, you're going to see right here, we might be able to see it. The receiver was open on the sideline. See how far Kevin Hayes is up? If the ball's thrown to that sideline out to him like an extended swing pass, you have you have a big gain and first down. But what Cruz Adams did is he just went in practice. You go there so many times, you run the wheel, he's going to be out there. He didn't read the relationship of the receiver and the quarterback, and he threw it around the most dangerous guy on the field, Kevin Hayes. And Kevin Hayes got the interception, and they're marking the ball, Vance. Looks like on the one-yard line, so they must be saying his momentum is going. But I thought it, it should have went in the end zone. Well, I guess he caught it, and we saw in our replay, caught it on the two, three-yard line or whatever and kind of ran it in. Well, then wouldn't it have to be a safety if he caught the ball or two and he ran in? They're going to run out of the end zone. A couple of fumble, 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 fumble. Garces ball. No, nope, nobody knows they have it yet. Ball's on the ground. The ball was on the ground. <laughs> nobody picked it up from Garces. They just oh, rolled boy. right over it. The fumble happened. The ball sitting on the grass, literally on the G, the white G on the goal line. And you're going to see the ball get knocked out of Vickers' hands, coming right here, pushes right through, good tackle. But the ball is going to pop out, and Garces has three players around it, and it's going to lay right on the ball. Nobody, and then the ball was right under one of the players. We can't see from this angle, but Vance and I can see it. It was right under his, his belly. They go up the middle with it, and uh, the, oh, this Garces Ram defense and Cameron Pacheco with another big tackle. Uh, and, wow, that would have been a devastating first quarter blow to the drillers had they picked up the ball or just fell on it. You know, Vance, now one thing that I don't know if Coach Gola has this in his package, 
But if they have a reverse where they get everybody going in that momentum and then Rufus can pitch, pitch it to a guy coming back in reverse motion, it'll be wide open because of the pursuit by the Rams. Third and three after all this, they pitch to the near side. He cuts up field, doesn't Short. get it, doesn't get it. Great, great tackle, great play. And this time it was Chris Sikowski. So Chris Sikowski makes a big tackle. And now this is awfully deep for a gamble. And here's the fumble play, Vance. You're going to see again, Vickers is going to cut up. Good tackle. I can't see what number 59, I think, Vance. I can't tell for sure. Ball's on the ground. And I'm saying you're going to see right there, the, just laying on the ball. Never even feels the ball under him. 35, never realized the ball was there. But Garfield again, great field position. While we were watching the replay, the drillers had about a 34-yard punt. So the Rams will take over an excellent field position. And I happen to think. How about Coach 24, Moore. partner? Not going good for the drillers. Where was he kicking from? I think oh, he was okay. right there on the seven. No, or he's in the end zone. So he kicks it from the goal line. It was, but remember how we got taught by Mr. Matt is from the line of scrimmage. We got to subtract all this. 15 here. The professor, you know how he did. Be that as it may, partner, the ball is first and 10 on the 34 of the drillers. So here comes the Garces Ram. And now they go on the ground. And it's a handoff right up the middle. And it's handled by Sheldon Crony Jr. So Cruz Adams. Gets right behind the center on this one. Comes over to talk to his coaching staff very quickly. Quickly, He's getting the play call given to him about three feet away from none other than D.T. Hironis. Coach Hironis handing off the offensive signs to him. And I'll go on the limb and Sheldon Crony Vance, in my opinion, they only, only know a sophomore is the best two-sport football basketball guy in town. He's going to be the most athletic guy on this field and only a sophomore. They're going to give it to him. Oh, he took a bruising hit, and I mean, he was hammered by Shaq Garrett. Oh, Shaq Garrett just lays him out. You know, it's a good hit, but Vance, watch. He's still able to get two yards, and that's what the good backs do. They just have a way of turn their body so the blow glances, and they're able to still pick up two yards. So he has his Garces Rams in a third and four, maybe a, a, a short five situation. 123 remaining here in this first quarter. You're watching high school football game of the week on Bright House Networks. Absolutely jam-packed Griffith Field. 7-0. Rams scored on their second possession. And now they're trying to get in again on a third and four. Adams sees everybody coming, slows them down with the count, bobbles the snap. Adams in trouble. Trying to get outside. Adams not gonna do it. That play looked bad from the start. It sure did, Vance, but they almost got lucky because all the pursuit was going the way of the play, <laughs> and he almost bounced out and was able to pick up a first down. Like, but you got to figure they're going for this if they went for it earlier. So fourth and four. Bobble snap right there. So see all the pursuit was going this way, so he's able to just kind of bounce out and just almost able to make it. But good job there by number two for the Drillers. Lawrence Conley Jr. We have a Conley Jr. and a Crony Jr. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Eye formation for the Rams on a big fourth and four attempt. Adams drops back, eye formation, floats one out high. It's up for grabs and it is incomplete. So it'll be First and 10 for the Drillers. It's incomplete pass, so the clock stops. So there's still 2.6 seconds okay. left in this first quarter. I know Maples knows this, and Jim's a good friend of mine. But don't play with these two corners. These guys are Division I Pac-12 athletes. Look at the position, stymied the receiver. The guy, times you were wide open, Vance, if you remember, it was in the middle of the field hitting those slot receivers. Stay away from 13 and 18. Two point six remains in this first quarter. I would think 
with all probability, this would be the last play of the first quarter, barring a penalty. They go to the air. Rufus tosses it out to the flats. And uh, that'll be it. So what a great first half. 7 nothing Garces. You're watching High School Football Game of the Week exclusively on Bright House Networks. Connect with an industry-leading fiber network powered by Bright House Network's business solutions. Chosen to provide communication services for the Republican National Convention, which meant building a metro ethernet for the convention that could support a small city. Dedicated bandwidth with guaranteed SLAs, a network scale to support hundreds of worldwide media outlets, and continuous Wi-Fi access. We connected Tampa to the world. Imagine what we could do for your business. Bright House Network's business solutions. Remember their first sleepover? They called just to say goodnight. Then it was the curfew call to let you know they were on their way. Now they're on their own. And with Bright House Network's home phone, staying in touch is just a phone call away, anytime, anywhere. Add home phone for as low as $10 per month and enjoy unlimited calling, plenty of free features, and proven reliability so you can call just to say hello. Learn more at brighthouse.com slash phone. And we're back here, Vance, and starting the second quarter. And the first quarter had a lot of big plays, but we only had seven points. I don't think Garth was able to capitalize on a couple situations that could have put him up a little bit bigger. But nonetheless, they're up 7-0 going to the first, the second quarter. And let's see what the drillers can come out in the second quarter and do offensively. And games like this, the time just flies. Pow, that first quarter was over in a heartbeat. All right, here come the drillers. First and ten. They want to go to the air. He floats it out there. He has a man. Oh, what a nice, nice route that was. That was a beautiful job by Kevin Hayes. And you just talked about him on defense, and we all know what he's about on offense. Well, Vance, he's one of the throwback driller type players. He's able to make big plays on offense, big plays on defense, and big plays on special teams. And right here, he's just got to stay patient. Don't get too frustrated because you're going to get some opportunities because of his athleticism is so far above the other players on the field. So he's going to get some opportunities, just has to stay patient. Second and ten. They go to the air again. This time it's a nice safe pass out to the flats. And it's caught out there by Lamicio Hill. So Hill picks up, and we may have a flag. I didn't see it way over there. You know, Brian, games like this just brings out everybody as we see a replay here out to the flats. Nice little pass, catch. And good catch with the hands, then turns it upfield and does a good job of picking up yardage. And it looks like this is going against Garces. Saw. Kyle Shiloh this evening ran into uh, a bunch of my good buddies that I played basketball with at Cal State and Fred Eccles and he and five other roadrunners were inducted into the Venice Beach Hall of Fame oh, Cool. last week. Amongst others, Kobe Bryant is in the Venice Beach Hall of Fame, so congratulations to Fred. This play has been stopped as well, so... A penalty on a play here. And seeing Joey Porter talk to him for oh, a second. Yeah. He's here representing his Sheldon Crony jersey shirt right there. <laughs> There's Joey Porter in the bright green crony shirt. And hey, if Porter's one of your cronies, you're running in good company, huh? Yeah, Joey's a good guy, does a lot for our community. Helps a lot of young people and just does a wonderful job of representing Bakersfield throughout his career. First and 10, drillers. Own 42, 43. They hand the ball at the middle. And uh, tackled right at the 45-yard line. The tackle made by Christian Sanders. So Christian Sanders doing his job. 
Coaching yeah. staff for the Drillers, of course, head coach Paul Gola, assistants Johnny Moran, Darren Carr, Eduardo Romero, and Demarcus Clear. Second and about 13, 14. Rufus. Fumble, fumble, fumble. fumble. <laughs> and I think BHS recovers uh, again. That ball bounced out of the hands. And here you go again, ripped out again. Ball, bad security by the drillers. And you know, and Garces just can't figure out a way to smother the pigskin. These are two times now. One right at the goal line they could have picked up on. They didn't. Now one at midfield when the drillers are struggling and can't get things going. They could have really had another nice big pickup. Can't put their hands on the ball. Well, Vance, when you're trying to get it upset, you just can't keep letting these opportunities pass by. You're right. And look what happens. Rufus looking to make something happen. Gets up to about the 34-yard line. And you just said it. They let a fumble opportunity slip through their hands. And then, boom, Rufus rattles off a first down run. Well, Vance, the recipe for an upset is to get your turnovers, score, put points up, and put the pressure on the offense. As you see right here, Rufus is doing a good job of keeping it. And then secondly, Vance, not only is it capitalizing, you can't miss the opportunities when they're presented to you. Picking up fumbles on the one-yard line, picking up a fumble on the 40, and keeping BHS drills on the field. Rufus. Oh, almost has that ball picked off, but it gets away with it. Now looking for some speed out here, and the ball goes down about the 27-yard line. They're right below us. Had that ball been thrown a hair late, it would have been gone for six, but it wasn't. Nice play. And you're going to see right here, just a swing pass out there. Rufus throws it out. Like you said, just a hair late. It would have been an interception or a bat down, but instead the drillers pick up eight. And again, second and third, I mean, second and about three. This is where the drillers want to be at. And like I said, they just stay patient, fans, never getting rattled. Second and three. Rufus right behind center. Takes a look. Three right in the box for the Rams. Rufus on a keeper. Gets brought down at about the 24-yard line, and he's very, very close to the first down. Super close. And they're moving the chains right there, Vance. Yep. And, and I tell you, one of the things that, that you watch the Paul Gola offenses do is they do a good job with the ball handling. You know, you really never know who has the ball, and that's why the Garces players have to be very disciplined, making sure that each guy has their assignment and who they're supposed to tackle. First and 10, Drillers at the Garces 24-yard line. Here come the big blue. Rufus rolls to his right. He's in trouble, gets out of trouble, throws it, and he gets it away. He takes a big hit, though. He was chased down from behind and brought to the ground by Jack Anspaugh. So Anspaugh gets into him a little bit, but he got rid of it. Right. No harm, no foul. Well, fans right there, good job of Rufus eluding the sack where Garces literally had him in the backfield and then able to get out and throw the ball away and avoid the sack and the loss of yardage. Second and 10, remember, they're in field goal range with Parker Campbell, so three points is almost a given for him. Eight and a half left in this first half. Option. And a nice job by the Garces defense. And Vickers tried to make something happen. Got a few yards, but didn't get too far. And that's Crony out there going one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I said, Vance. He's probably one of the few guys on the field for Garces that can match up athletically with these guys. Third down and seven. Third down to seven, under eight to go in this first half. What are you pointing at, partner? And it was overthrown. It was intended for Hayes, not even close. He's not happy, and Rufus took a big hit. And he was brought to the ground by number 51, and that is 
Apolnilar Quintero. So Quintero with a nice hit. And he gets some love from his teammates. And fans, number 30 is Bruce, the sophomore, who's very exciting, has great big play capability. So the drillers just seem to get younger and better. Look at this, Brian. Uh-oh, whistles blow before anything happens on this field goal attempt. All right, so against the Rams, so it gives them an extra five yards. They'll take that any day to try to get on the board here. So now it's fourth and four. Gola may change up his philosophy here, which I think for sure he's going to do. So this is a big, big fourth down here. It'll be the second one in the first half that they go for. And now the Garza fans are gonna start making some noise and see if they can't get their defense fired up. So they were going for a field goal, but with the penalty now, moves it up five yards closer, and here come, here come the uh, the drillers. Gonna try to make it happen here on a fourth and four. That, that's too much room. He's gotta get, be able to get open and make a catch for three yards right there if they're gonna throw the ball. What are they gonna do? Rufus, they hand the ball, and it's a big play, and a lot more than a first down, so. Good play call in there by the driller coaching staff. And Jeremiah Reddick doing the big work there. Takes a big hit at the end here to knock him out of bounds. If not, it would have been a touchdown. So first and goal for the drillers on the four-yard line. And Vance, you know, we saw Garces go for it on fourth down. Same dive playing and score. And right there, Reddick puts the drillers on the four-yard line. Big goal line stand by the Rams. So fumble, fumble. Ooh. Hey, whistle, blew the whistle down. Did you hear the whistle before the ball? I, I saw him running out, then the whistle blow. <laughs> close, real close. That was close. Here's a replay, and uh, motion was stopped, so that's pretty much... Pretty much it. We got a timeout on the play. We'll give you the coaching staff for the Garces Rams as they're right below us meeting with their player. Jim Maples is the head coach, the iconic Jim Maples. And he has DT Hironis, Chris Ship, Frank Gonzalez, Eric Duncan, and Victor Garcia with him. And the Kern County Officials Association tonight. Proudly represented by a top-notch crew. The referee is Joe Saldivar. Umpire is Bob Williams. Head linesman, Sean Carlson. Line judges, Brandon Schneider. Back judge, Norm Fox. And in the box, Rob Guyton. Thank you, fellas. And if you'd like to be in the Kern County Officials Association, go to www.kerncountyofficialsassociation or KCOA. And say, hey, I want to I ref some basketball, ref some football, ump some baseball. Thank you, gentlemen. Second and goal from the two. And it's going to be a touchdown. Rufus takes it in himself. The QB gets it. Vance Rufus made that seem a little easy on that play. Just kind of faked the ball in and hesitated for a second and just put his head down and scored. Good job. So they're on the board with 6.53 remaining in the first half, and here's the PAT to tie it up. Parker Campbell, it's up, it's through, it's good, and we're tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. A really nice football game unfolding down here in downtown Bakersfield. It's nice. I like it. Well, Vance, we got great weather and two great football 
program story programs and seven seven game but it just feels like Garces has been up the whole game but it's only seven seven they just weren't able to capitalize if you're just getting with this in the second quarter in the first quarter you know that's a great point Brian because they uh you know things could be a lot worse for the drillers at least score wise not that they ever get real shook up or get really worried about anything especially not at home but um, you know, they, they've dodged a couple of proverbial bullets here with a fumble on their own goal line and then a fumble midfield when they had nothing going on. And then right after they didn't pick up the fumble, Rufus goes on a long run, picks up the much needed first down, and then boom, there they go. So we're tied up at seven. Hope you're enjoying this. Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. I'm Vance Palm. I've got Brian Adams with me. Thanks to Zach doing our pregame show. And uh, we're just loving this. It's good times down here, early September. A lot of my buddies here tonight and yours too. We saw a lot of friends in pregame. <laughs> Kickoff, it's up, it's good, it's deep, it's long. And with Parker Campbell behind the football, when he boots it up, it's uh, rarely going to be returned. So we'll see the Rams right below us in our scissor lift. They'll have it on the 20-yard line, so we'll get a good look here at this uh, Rams offense. They've been on the other side of the football, and we haven't had a chance to really see them. And you see again, that's the replay of the touchdown. Good job by Rufus to muscle it through. You know, let's see right now if Garces can get back to moving the ball a little bit. You know, they really haven't been consistent in that, and they've just missed some big plays. But I think they have to take advantage of those slot receivers. Hand off to the left side. Nice big run. Boy, that's good. That's a great start that's to Thrash this series. Right there. And that's Dominic Crash. He's a track star, so he has the speed. And I like his ability to stop and start. Good cut right here and the acceleration. So good job by Frash. Again, he's one of the guys they say runs 4-4. And you can see right there's acceleration. He can pick him up and put him down. First and 10. Adams hands the ball off to Frash again. This time Frash, no dice. Cannot get outside. Brought down at the 35. You know, any time you play the drillers, Vance, you know, you want to run the ball, but that's really one of their strengths is stopping the run. But you can't completely abandon it because then they can just tee off and start going on the blitzes. But you see right there, Campbell coming in low. Good job from on that secondary and making a tackle. Second and 10. Adams in the shotgun. Has Hunter Barnes next to him. Adams looks left. Gets out of trouble. He's in big trouble this time. And he's muscled down at about the 25-yard line. So Cruz Adams pops up. You know, let's watch this one, Vance. You know, I think he goes a little premature on the run on that one. I think he had a little more time than he thought. But anytime you see that deep blue <laughs> coming after you, it's almost like it's just going to come and wrap you up and envelop you. But he had a little more time on that one. Five eighteen and counting. All right, third and ten. Nice play for both sides of the football field. Fans love this one. Crony in the slot. Adams trying to get out of trouble. Adams still in trouble, getting wrapped up. Brought down about the 35. No big gain there, and they were coming that time, B. Yeah, and that time he didn't have a choice. There was no time. Great pressure up the middle, and you'll see right here. I can't see what number comes in, but just misses the sack, number 11. Yeah, great play by Truba. And then the rest of the driller blue just comes and finishes off the deal. They're going to punt, and the punter is their quarterback, Cruz Adams. His father is just to the right of me over here, and the next stands over. Great athlete himself. And his uncle Jeff Adams, one of our mutual buddies and another all-around great, great athlete. He's got a great dad as an athlete and a great uncle as an athlete. 
I played a lot of sports with his uncle, and he's a top-notch five-star athlete, and Cruz has got a lot of that. Here we go. High snap. Cruz has got it. And I say that, and I pretty much put the hex on him. <laughs> That's on me, Adams family. And you know, BHS another, is going to take it. Another thing, man, since he's really trying directional punt and keeps the ball away from Hayes, which I think is smart. But that time he just didn't get a good clip on it. It was and just hit it off to the right, just a little shank. But the Garces defense is back out. You know, and the one thing is they played a lot of plays that last series, yeah, Vance. Yeah. And the drillers just want to grind you out. So let's see what happens now with the driller offense. This is two games in a row, Vance. The drillers really haven't come out to play with that fire in the, and coming out firing all cylinders. Well, you're right, Brian. That was a very quick series, and that driller D is, uh, that, I mean, that, that Rams D is back on there. Hey, don't mess with my mic, partner. <laughs> Rufus behind center. Hands the ball off. Pitches it. Sorry. Got me again. Rufus is just such a great with that ball fake. I, I figured he'd get me two or three times tonight. That's the first one. Yeah, he does a great job. You know, he's picked up right where Hannibal's left off Ooh. of really faking that ball into the belly of the dive, man. And then nice pitch, good pitch relationship. But give Garces credit again. They're doing a great job of, of playing in position, and they haven't really given up that big, big play. You're right. Second and seven. This one goes right up the middle, and just man on man, you bring it. I'm here. Let's see who goes down first. And it's just some really heavy-duty smash-mouth football right at the middle of the football field. We've seen some pass plays on both teams, but now I think with three minutes left in this first half, I'm sure Coach Gold would like to get into that tunnel with a lead at home. I'm sure he would, Vance. And I think, you know, that dive play's been big right here. And I think they have to read Frash. If Frash is playing off, I think you can get a quick hitch off to hit Hayes, but there's the dive, I think, right there. Or... And first down drillers. No, Rufus kept it that time. So 243 and counting. You know, and there's right there, quarterback keeper able to pick up a first down. That's what I was talking about uh -oh. right there, fans. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, a nice open field tackle. It was made by Dominic Frash. If it hadn't have been Frash, I don't know if they'd have stopped him. Well, fans, this is what I like about it is Frash is playing off. Just get the ball to your playmaker very early. See, right there, he's going to be able to catch it. And even if Frash tackles him, that's a six, seven-yard gain. Now you're in second and short. Second and four to be exact, Captain. Rufus right behind center. Everybody packed in tight. All drillers within about 15, 20 feet of each other. Rufus on a keeper. He gets buried. Doesn't happen. And he's brought down out there initially by Emmanuel Flores. So Emmanuel Flores swallows up Rufus. You know, again, I really like the way the Garces Ram defense has played. They've been very disciplined, Vance. You know, again, we haven't seen any big plays from the drillers as to this point. You know, and now they can interrupt at any time. But I just haven't even seen anything. And Irvin's another guy on the other side. Big play performing. You have to be careful. That might be short, Vance. Complete out there to Hayes and Dominic Frash, amongst others. And helped out by Pacheco. Cameron Pacheco really playing a nice football game tonight. And he's a 6'2", 215-pound senior. We'll see him right here. Frash does the early work, and here comes Pacheco to help him out. He's around the football a lot. And I like the closeout by Frash. Oh, goodness. I think Rufus has to get the ball down a little quicker. They gave him a first down mark. I think that's a little generous. But either way, the drillers are moving the ball. Wow, the, the sticks are on the Garces' side, too. So the chain gang right here next to the Garces' coaches, they didn't like it. Confusion. Right in the middle of the play, the running back and Rufus bump into each other, but Rufus being so talented, so quick, so and alert, strong. got some, and he, strong. He's a very strong young man. You see right there, he's able to just drag a couple guys and pick up the first down. Hey, I don't know if we can see it again, but that previous uh, third down play when uh, Dominic Frass closed on him, I just think it was a little, a little late. Well, what we're watching, 
uh, Kern County is is a matchup between two very very quick players Hayes for the drillers Frash for the Rams and they're out on the uh, flats right in front of us right below our cameras actually so you're what Brian's trying to get to is you know uh, two very very quick players out in the open and you young players how to do it and let's see Kevin goes down right there now see he catches the ball see he's short of the first down wow he, wow. I mean, when he actually catches, he runs beyond the line, does a great job of that getting me on the first down. But when he actually catches and, and controls the ball, he's about a yard short of the first down. As we saw by that camera angle, good job right there. Packed house, Griffith Field. Couldn't get a seat if you tried right now. There's people standing all over this place, including me. I could never call a game like this sitting down. 53 seconds remains. The driller's trying to get in. And the ball's handed off to Reddick up the middle, and he's wrapped up again by Taylor. Keone Taylor, big, big old boy, right in the middle of the football field. Look at this, Gola going to let this clock go. He has one timeout left. Oh, almost a touchdown, almost a touchdown. Jeremiah Reddick tripped up, falls out into the middle there, and... Coach Gola crouched down on his knees, not going to call the timeout again. He's got 26.8. They made uh, first down, so they have to move the sticks. So it's first and goal from the 10. And he can still run the ball with a timeout. A pitch. Oh, it's in trouble. Fumble, fumble, fumble. Now he's got to call timeout. Another fumble by the drillers. That relationship between quarterback and running back as our colleague Kevin Keyes so eloquently liked to discuss, was not a good relationship on this one. High not pitch. Not just that, just a bad pitch. You know, you're getting tackled, you're going down. The pitch was high, didn't have anything really on it. I mean, I think it still should have been caught, but it just wasn't the greatest pitch. But again, the drillers now have 13 seconds. Without a timeout, I think you have to go to a pass. I would like to see him to have the ball in the hash is work Kevin on this side going one on one because now you're in a situation Vance you really can't play too far off of your frash there is a height difference he can stem him in bounce out to the sideline and if you see Vance where this man is standing right there on that, that blue shirt you throw it out it towards him right on that line to go, and it should be able to be a touchdown oh what a big play right here a big couple of moments for both teams the score is seven to seven 13.6 seconds remain in the first half the drillers have a first and goal from the 12 yard line rufus right behind center Goes back, wants to put it in the air, throws it up, and it's caught at about the three-yard line. See, so they're not going to be able to get. They're not going to be able to get anything off, Vance. That's, that clock's going to tick off, Vance. Halftime. Halftime. They don't get it done. Coach Gola, disgusted, absolutely livid. Can't believe the. Drillers didn't get it done. That ball's got to be thrown in the end zone. Either you catch a touchdown and you go a fade. You can't throw anything short, Vance, of the goal line for that reason. That's why I said I like when you had Kevin in space right here. Let your best player go one-on-one -on -one and see if he can make a play for you. But hats off to the guards' defense. They've been playing good all night long as Joey Porter's giving some encouragement to Crony. The Driller fans, quiet. Not really aware of what to do right now. Thought they probably might be up more. The Rams fans going bonkers right now. <laughs> and it's really only 7-7. But what a great first half. We'll be back with the third quarter right after this on Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. At Bright House Networks, we don't want to be seen as just a cable company. We hope to be considered a friend, the kind of friend who's in your community, helping out where and when we can, and who can make rainy nights in better than a night out, the kind who lets you conquer worlds from your bedroom and bring old friends together even though they're worlds apart. That's just the kind of friend we are. Bright House. 
Hello, friend. I'm Amar, and I'm responsible for IT operations of 25 healthcare clinics. I'm Paula with Bright House Networks Business Solutions. We have an entire team standing behind Amar, ensuring he gets the exact dedicated fiber services he needs. We're ahead of the curve in healthcare with our electronic medical record system. We send information everywhere, even internationally. Our patient's care depends on guaranteed uptime, and that's unique to Bright House. Bright House Networks Business Solutions, where business gets personal. And Vance, what a first half, partner. Garces came out on fire, jumped out on the drillers. Drillers had to kind of claw the way back. We're able to overcome a few miscues and not pay a heavy price and have the game tied up. What'd you, uh, what'd you hear from your boys tonight? Well, they said this is what the drillers have been doing so far this year, Vance, just not coming out offensively on fire but he's been relying on the defense. What about you? What did you hear? I know you were down there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think, all right, let's see what Coach Gola discussed with his guys out there, and let's see if we can withstand it. Uh, one of the things I heard a lot about was, wow, Garces it, it got to gotta fall on these footballs that are popping around out there. Well, I think you're exactly right, Vance, and I think your people and my people are about saying the same thing is, Hey, Garce has had uh, golden opportunities to really put this thing up there pretty good, 21-0. You know, the drillers really haven't showed a real high-powered offense. You know, and you got to remember, last year Hannibal was player of the year. He single-handling a couple of games we did, just made big run after big run and blew games open. But I think right now I like to see them settle down and run their offense. And here we go, Vance. They weren't even on the wrong right side of the field. But you talked about Adams <laughs> being a real good athlete. I mean, Vance, remember when we were kids, they had that punt, pass, and kick. Well, he'd be the champion if they were still doing it. Here comes the kicking side of Cruz Adams. I was actually talking to his father and his uncle for a brief second. They were in the area that I was standing and talked to his uncle Jeff. His uncle Jeff Adams probably one of the best if not the best athlete to ever come out of Highland High School. A couple of big names to throw in there as well, but Jeff Adams is saying the guy's just a great young man. His Cruz has just got his head on straight and kicked a nice 60-yarder, and it's going to be the driller starting off about the 25-yard line. So here we go. Well, fans, you know one thing about Gola, he's very intense. You see the kickoff right here. And not much to do with right there. Good return, about 23, 24 yard line. But uh, one of the things we talk about is Gola. He reminds me of uh, John Gruden. You know, he has that look, that very tough, uh, chucky look as Bernie gave it to me. Thank you there, sir. And uh, just very hard nosed, intense coach. And, you know, his kids just don't make a lot of mistakes. Gruden wishes he was in the shape Gola's in. <laughs> First play for the second half and I know exactly what you mean Brian when they didn't get that playoff at the end of the half I have a feeling those drillers ran into some of that Gola energy in the locker room you know again I can say I was able to get in there tonight before the game and just walking through that stadium brought back some memories of this game for me but he was giving the speech he had me thinking I could shed 30 pounds right now <laughs> uh, you don't have that much to shed second and seven Rufus behind center. Rufus hands the ball off. Big loss, though. Big loss. It looked like a bad exchange. Well, Vance, one thing about it is the offense has not been crisp today. The offense is struggling. They, you know, they rely on some big plays historically. This year's team has to get their identity. You know, again, throughout the time of goal's presence you know third down and long has not been the drillers big plays but last year we said that and then kevin hayes made some real big plays rufus thrown for a big loss tried to run to the left and throw across his body and he was brought down thrown down big play out there by chris sakowski 
And you know, that name is very popular in Garces. They just seem to come up Sikowski after Sikowski. But right there, there's Chris making a big play. And look at the field position that Garces has a chance to get to. Ballou and Sweeney. Standing at the 50 yard line. I think they have 12 men on the field, Vance. Ballou's going to fair catch it. He does, and it'll be first and 10 from their own 46. There's 12 Garces players on the field. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 12 guys on the field. Well, if we go to pre snap, we can count it out. Let's see. It's a moot point. There was no flag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think there's a couple more guys right here than four, than two way back. So. Well, they got it. It's like my old buddy Terry Hallam used to say. Yeah. It's a great move if you can get away with it. It sure is. Crony out to the right side. Crony cuts up, still on his feet. Gets to the 45-yard line. Looks like about a 10-yard gain from there. <laughs> well, yeah, Crony did a great job. Great blocking right there by the Garces linemen. I mean, they're going to get out and open some holes. And I like the patience of Crony. He doesn't get all the afterburns. He reads his hole. Now he cuts up field. Good pad leverage. He's able to run through a couple of tackles. As you see, Bruce right there able to hang on to the ankles. Now, I think if Bruce doesn't grab those ankles, it's a bigger gain than that. Second and two. Crony again, up the middle of the field. I think everybody thought that it was gonna be Gola that just tries to pound it out, but now Maple's saying, why don't we stay in the ground a while, boys? Well, you know, you figure, you're, you're facing two guys. Maple's is really known for being a high-octane offense guy when he has the pieces. Remember when he had Matthews at East and those guys, he was able to put a lot of points, a lot of yards on the board. He has some pieces here at Garces. Offensively, he will challenge you. You know, he's come out the last two weeks. What has he been doing, Vance? Pass, pass, pass. But what does he do today? He's mixing it up, keeping the driller defense honest. Thank you, Brian. First and 10, 9, 13 left in this third quarter. This game has gone pretty smoothly. Not a lot of penalties to extremely well-coached teams. And I don't mean just the head coaches, the staffs all around as Cruz Adams has two receivers split way out to the left side. It's a handoff, and now this there is Crony. Goes. Crony looking to get deep, and he goes. Crony in the end zone. Touchdown, Garces. <laughs> hey, Kern County, I'm not laughing at anyone. I'm just enjoying Jory Porter right below us with a crony shirt on and he's up hopping around talking to all his boys here's a great look at it right here brian man oh man oh man you and were right hit the hole in good form he touchdown garces so a couple of run plays in a row and i think bhs thought they may go to the air that didn't happen. They stay on the ground with Shelton Crony Jr. And he absolutely lights up that driller defense. The snap, the hold, the kick. But their flags and whistles go off before it even happens. So we'll take another break here before we get the actual field goal kick or the PAT kick. And Vance, how about that? You talked about it before, partner. Hey, Mabel's going to talk to his guy, see what can happen. And instead of the drillers coming out, being the aggressor, making the putting the pressure back on Garces, Garces comes right back. On with, the ground. With, with, on the ground, with runs with Crony. Three runs, and he scores. So big play. And, you know, and I told you, right going to the half, Porter was talking to him, got some encouragement, and nothing like having a guy like Joey Porter in your corner encouraging you. Well, here comes the, uh, here comes the field goal. The, sorry, the PAT. See if they can make this a 14-7 game. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up and it's through. So 14-7, the Garces Rams up on BHS with 8.50 remaining here in this third quarter. 
And here's another look at the touchdown. And it's just a really, really nice job of running by Crony Jr. And a good straight arm right there. He's going to push off the defender, and that's Vickers. And then he leaves him in the death. And Vance, he's not going full man, speed. So man. he has something else in the tank. Like he's Hussein got some Bolt extra gears. Like Hussein Bolt kind of cruising in. Well, well, well. 8.50 remaining in the third. And it's 14-7 right now. And right below us, in a bright green lime shirt, is Joey Porter with a crony T-shirt on. And he's surrounded by a lot of great former athletes here in Bakersfield. Chris Clayton Chris amongst Clayton. them. Mike Dallas right there. I'm going to try to get a hold of him, see if I can get Joey to stand up and show us the shirt. <laughs> He's right below us. Super Bowl champion. All right, here we go. Here's the kickoff. Garces fans are up. They are loving this. And here's Cruz Adams to kick off at the 40-yard line. And this ball's returnable. Caught at the five-yard line. Driller's trying to make something happen. Big hit. Flag, Flag on down. the play. So the Rams got on the scoreboard first in the first quarter. Had a couple of opportunities to get on the scoreboard. Didn't get it done. Three fumble opportunities slipped through their fingers. The Drillers finally tied it up in the second quarter. Had a chance to go ahead right at the end of the first half. Didn't get the playoff. Time ran out. That kept the Ram fans buoyant as they cheered the Rams out the gate and out into the practice field for their time together and the drillers went into the locker room a bit chagrined and haven't come out with a pop in their step at all a face mask was called on the kickoff return so now it's first and ten and it's pretty good field position now it's gonna be Rufus Rufus now being swarmed on by these Garces defenders and we see it all the time Brian a team that's not favored to win gets in this dogfight and starts to hang in there and when they get up now everybody's pumped everybody's flying to the ball everybody's moving around with uh, a real crispness to them and they've been doing that all game long defensively fans those interior linemen have done a good jo good job pass out to the right side and it's a nice play big block and that bhs crowd likes that a big hit out in the open field by a driller and that's Lamisho Hill right there, and he's putting the pop on Crony. But Crony just gets on up and says, don't worry about it. Ooh, nice hit. Great coverage, fellas. Our director tonight is our senior director, producer, Bernard Johnson. And we have Dave Farnes with us, Edward Dick, the boss, Super Sammy Bowman, Carlos Anguiano. Great job tonight, fellas. Rufus wants to look, has, floats it out there, and it's, oh, drop. And it was a really, really nice pass out to Amon Grad. He has some room, man, so he can catch it. Now that was a nice pass. And that's who threw the pass was, was Greg. No, Greg. It was, it was intended for Greg. Well, that's Dallas who dropped it. That's number oh, six. Oh, Darren Dallas. Yeah, Sorry, Darren. Dallas. Darius Dallas, fourth and five. Drillers are going to have to punt, so Ballou. is back with Sweeney again at about the 24-yard line. Low punt, I mean low snap, booming punt. What a, what a punt. Oh, goodness, and it's going to go out just perfectly. Oh, what a kick. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh. So... Parker Campbell handles a low punt, picks it up off the ground, and smacks it down to the four-yard line. What a punt. Look at this ball. That ball's got eyeballs. Well, I'll tell you this. you got to be a cool customer for that, Vance. Pressure coming. You pick it up like a shortstop and then just kicks it down and rolls inside the five. And I, I wouldn't be surprised now if Golo tries to turn the defense loose 
and let the pressure go. He loves to let these guys go and make plays. Seven fifty-one remains in this third quarter. Fourteen to seven. Rams deep in their own territory. Start a long drive, they hope. They hand the ball off right up the middle. And uh, nothing doing there. Maybe two or three yards. So with 742 and counting, the Rams will maybe get a long, long drive in there. Maybe not. Might have to give up this football early. Interesting drive right now as far as the script unfolding here middle of the third quarter. Well, I think you're exactly right, Vance. And I think the one thing that Garth has to do is get this ball out of this area because you don't have much room to punt. You're trying to already directional punt away from Hayes, and so you don't want to give him an opportunity to touch the ball and make a big play. Same token, if you're the drillers, you've got to keep them down here on this and force this punt. They're going to go to Crony. Crony's going to get wrapped up. What a nice play that was. A really nice tackle. And again, it was made by Shaq Garrett. Shaq has had a couple of really nice plays tonight. Shaq Garrett's a ball player, fans. He uses quickness, runs in the air, runs through, holds on to Sheldon Crony before he can get going. And you see Darius Dallas is right there, too. So he's ready to make a play. And that's exactly what the driller defense ordered. And you're going to see Gola put it on, put, tighten up that pressure on well, it. And you know what Dallas did is just stretch that out long enough and far enough to where, you know, Crony couldn't go anywhere, and Garrett got him. Held him down. Well, 6.25 and counting in the third quarter. I formation for the Rams. It's Crony Jr. and Anspa in the backfield. Cruz goes, oh, movement, movement flags, Larson. and there's going to be flags, and they stop it. So really, no harm, no foul. You can really only go back a few yards. They're so right. deep. The but only they're issue jittery. Is though, they're jittery. Have to punt. Yeah. Because then you got you shrink that area. You have to be in the end zone to receive that kick. Now, here's where it's great to have two Vance big time Pac-12 type corners because you can lock them up and you got to tell them you can't get beat. Let the other nine guys do their job, but you guys lock these corners up against two good receivers. We'll see what they draw up in the offensive board here. Met Brian make a great point. It's, you know, they're going to have to punt this football deep in their own territory, as deep as you can get, basically, if they don't pick up some friendship yards here and get themselves out of this hole. Third and nine. See, six I like minutes. Irvin and Hayes in a matchup. Adams, shotgun, taps his helmet, looks over. He's got Crony to his left. Might be a screenplay. No, they lob it up. They throw it up, and it's just out of the yeah. fingertip reach of Sweeney. They went down the sidelines and just threw it too far. You but know, it was safe. Good. Yeah, but that's good position right there by Hayes. Only a perfect pass is going to beat you. You ran the receiver to the sideline. So, Vance, really, Cruz had, did not have much room to throw the ball because he's so close to the sideline, a little off, and it's out of bounds. If he f folds back in and pushes back in on Hayes, he's going to give Cruz more of a window to throw the ball to make a play. Okay, Adams with his heels in the back of the end zone. They lead by seven, but they're in deep trouble right now, way back in their own end zone. Needs to be a really good snap. Perfect snap. Adams boots it. Long Return spiral ball. punt. Return and it ball. is returnable at the 40-yard line. Oh, it's he's coming back. Oh, they didn't call it. Another couple big hits. Hayes still on his feet. Coaching staff for Garces wants to know, hey, how is that not a penalty? Yeah, I, hey, I don't know how to miss that one, partner, because you can't hit a man in the back on his numbers, but we'll see the replay. Adams does a great job of getting the ball. What I was saying is that low hard drive is a return ball. You'll see Hayes get the ball right here, and there's no way that's not a block in the back, fans. Goodness gracious. I the mean, Garces the Garces fans have a right to be upset. Because that definitely should have been moved back, and that ball should be closer to the 50 as opposed to this 10. Yeah, you're talking about the ball being at midfield instead of the 17-yard line. That's huge. Pitch to the near side. Garces tries to string it out, but 
A really nice job by Hill. That is just great, great running right there by Lamicio Hill. He hung on to the whole play and got something out of it. And you know, Vance, that was just Hill wanting it more than anybody else on the field on that play. The play was actually strung out, should have been attacked on the backfield. Good penetration again by the front guys for Garces. Now, where are your linebackers? Over pursuit. They're not, not able to make a play. And then Hill's able to cut it up and find some yardage for six, seven yards. Second and five. Dallas in motion. They pitch to Dallas. Dallas cuts back up the field. Dallas going to pick up the first down. He's gang tackled about the five. But Dallas picks up the first down. And right here you have Dallas, just a toss sweep. They're able to cut the ball upfield for the first down. Able to make it hold on. That just saved a bigger play by right there. 52 for Garces, and that's Christian Sanders. Rufus, misdirection play, kind of hung on to a little fake draw, just hands on, hangs on to it and picks up a couple of nice big yards there. You know, right there, Vance, Rufus does a good job. He just sticks that ball in there, but Garces is again able to make a stop. Now, can the Garces defense get a good enough penetration to disrupt the play in the backfield? Otherwise, watch Rufus keeping it again like he did early in the, in the game for Driller's first touchdown. Did it again, Rufus, touchdown, we're tied up. What a great athlete. Yeah, and Vance is almost too hard to stop. It's the same thing with Hannibal. They do such a great job with that play fake and that ball fake that it holds everybody else. And then they just wait for a second and they accelerate and they're too strong and they score easily. The system that Coach Gola puts in place When you get that close to the goal line, it is extremely difficult to stop that offense from getting in, as you just said. But it's the system, Brian. It's not just, you know, a couple of big plays and a bit of luck here, a big there. They, they work to get themselves in that position. Well, it's the third quarterback they plugged in and just keep having success. So here's a flag. Flag after the PAT. You know, the first half was not loaded up with a bunch of big stats. I talked to one of the statisticians that was that is covering this game, and there was really nothing to write home to mom about as far as numbers passing, rushing for either team, and it showed in a 7-7 score. Uh, but they, we've had big plays. We've had some memorable moments here in this two and two quarters plus, but the big number here is 14 to 14 with 351. And that's exactly it, Vance. And like I said, you got one thing we got to give the drillers credit for. They don't panic. Give Garces credit for a beautiful game plan, and they're executing it. You know, like I said, in the first half, they had a couple chances to really exploit this. But I know what Jimmy Maples is talking <laughs> about right now. He said there's no way in the world you can miss this. He's out in the middle of the field. That's all he's talking to him. He said, now how do you miss it? Because instead of us now defending a short field, they got to go about a half the field, and they haven't really moved the ball on us. But we're going to see in the replay, as you can see, if we can freeze it right there, there's no way that is a legal block. There's just no way there it, it is. Now, it wasn't called, so therefore it goes through. But as you're Maple, that's what he's talking about. Sikowski was, had a beat on him. He got drilled into the ground. And the thing about it was, if we if we get the replay again after this kickoff, um, we can do it after the kickoff. But we can see it again. There wasn't. I'm gonna tell you, as my as your return guy, I'm Vance. Don't touch him. He's not. He's never gonna touch me. He's never gonna touch me. You don't touch him. See, this is what I would do right here. See, he's not gonna. He doesn't have a chance to get Kevin Hayes. See, right there. Even if he gets. Kevin's gonna go. He's Kevin's too fast. Even though it looks like he's right here, there's too much space. 
good athlete like Kevin, he's going to run by him. Because my job, Vance, is to make those first guys miss. And I want to tell you, don't go back to block. You peel upfield. Because, see, if he goes upfield and blocks, now where he was having some of those issues, there might have been even a more of a wide open space if you pick somebody off for a touchdown. Well, <clears throat> which cliche do I use? No crying over spilled milk. That's you know, right. which, which one is it? I mean, it's over. You know, my, my kids tell, you know, when somebody gets food they don't like, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Well, and I think, you know, what Maples needs to do is say, hey, you know, I think what he was doing was reminding him, hey, you know, let, let's, let's try to watch this thing a little closer here. It's an important game for both teams. And, you know, that was t to Coach Maples. He's thinking that's a seven point call. Right. But, it, but again, they still have to defend. Sure. Sure. There's 18 yards for you to defend. And that's what the official's going to tell him. You know, he's going to say, hey, <laughs> there's eight more uh, yards to defend. I was reading John Wooden, uh, a book on John Wooden called Leadership, and he was talking about one game when he stopped, when he started, when he stopped to argue with officials. He's yelling at this official, and the official goes, but coach, the other guy likes to call. So, you know, you're never going to be right. It's official, but one team's going to like it, one team's not. You got to play basketball or football. Well, and I can tell you this Coach Gold is not feeling sorry for anybody either. He's not, he's not about to say, oh, poor Coach Maple. So look at this 14 14, a timeout call. The first timeout call by Garces this evening. Cruz Adams looked down at his wrist and looked at his plays and said, you know what, let's call a timeout here. It's second and 10. And we want to take a look at this and see what we can get together. And, coaching staff out there speaking with the Rams and Coach Maples just kind of standing off to the side and boy Jimmy Maples has had some great great moments here and on this field uh, fall of 1979 he was the quarterback right down on that goal line right at the end of the half the West Vikings were going up against the Arvin Bears and I was a freshman standing right where Greg Kerr was and I was Young little kid watching these guys play, and Mike Duncan, and Kevin Young, and Willie Rinneveld, and Jeff Showers, and Danny Tarver, and they had a goal line stance, stopped him right here on this field. That was the quarterback, Jimmy Maples. One of many, many, many moments he's had here as a Kern County football player and a coach. So uh, look at this right here, right below us, four receivers in a diamond shape right out here on the right side. Cruz Adams back there all by himself, and he better get rid of it quickly. He throws it out to Crony. Crony's going to try to do something on his own. Takes a big hit from the side. Nice play. Good play call. Crony goes down at the 30 and very close to a first down. Pretty much see that play coming, Brian. It was all designed for Crony. Yeah, and a good job right here. Crony's going to go in and out. Comes back out, but great job right there making the cut. And actually, the pass being behind him helped to make that play. Yep. If the pass is thrown really how it's supposed to, he's tackled right there. But great adjustment on the ball, great turn on the ball, turn the ball, and now you got third and manageable. Third and one. Crony gets it and some. Good job. Nice play for the Rams and chewing up the clock we're tied at 14 to 21 they'll move the chains and then the clock will begin again what a football game on bright house networks bakersfield i'm vance palm i'm joined as always by brian items brian's played his football here in high school at bhs he is a member of the bakersfield high school football hall of fame he played for the ucla bruins and he's giving back to the community with his time and his expertise here on bright house networks what a pleasure to have Brian with us looking at this field that he used to play on. He said, hey, Vance, when I played here, you couldn't even get in. There were so many people. Adams out to the flat. This time it's the Frash. Frash is going to go nowhere. What a really, really nice tackle by Hayes out there. Hey, Vance. One thing you can say about the corners for the drillers is that word as advertised. They are as advertised. Vance, look how they come up and attack run through, wrap up, throw down, and Frash, who's very quick and fast, is not able to make a move on on Hayes there, and Hayes throws him for a loss. A loss brings up second at about 14, with 120 remaining here in the third quarter. Things starting to get pretty interesting. Adams takes a big hit, throws one up, and it is intercepted by Hayes. 
I told you earlier, man, you can't go there. Cruz Adams is down. Took a huge hit as he let go of the football. I think more than anything, he just took a big shot right in the gut. An interception right there for Hayes. And I told you earlier, Vance, you cannot throw the ball like that against these two corners. You're talking about top elite level Pac-12, Big 12 type quarter, cornerbacks. You don't have a matchup. You might have got 150 last week and the 150 before that, but you're not going to do it tonight on these guys. They pitch it to the near side here. The late flag, late flag, and if that is unsportsmanlike against the Rams, it's going to be a very foolish mistake because it was a great play by the linebackers for the Garces Rams. Come holding on the driller. Oh. I was going to say, man, it looked like the driller offense guy was on. Sikowski. Sikowski, so I don't think. And we'll see right here. But give the, the Garza's defense credit. They have stifled this driller offense. Right there, good job in the backfield. Well, we won't but see it there. But the holding was downfield on one of the linebacker from a lineman five, seven yards downfield. I saw a flag thrown, and then I looked down and see two drillers pointing at a, at a ram, and I said, uh-oh, something might have gone on down there. But no, second and 15, Brian, for the drillers, and they're on their own. 35-yard line. Rufus wants to go to the air. Rufus stands back, throws, has a man open. Ooh, just overthrows the intended receiver. And uh, that's the kicker punter, Parker Campbell. And right there now, another missed big play. And we've seen both teams do this, Vance, have guys open and just not able to connect. As you sit back right here, he's going to step back. Has enough time. Sure does. The ball's a little flat for what you want when you have a guy that opened. You want to kind of let the, like a Willie Mays almost, the ball to arc in, not that flat. Uh, that flat ball's more when you're running a post route and you're coming inside. Well, that was really nice pocket. He had a lot of time. Third and 15, Rufus drops back, wants got to get him. rid of it again. Now he's got his man, big time. And it's Hayes, it's a foot race. Can Hayes get there? It's a foot race. Can Hayes get there? Can Hayes get there? He does. It's not Hayes, man. That's Jermaine Irvin. The Irvin, other Pac-12 player. Irvin. Sorry, Irvin family, no name, no number, and I was hooked on Hayes. Not in the uh, not in the program, my apologies, but it's Jermaine Irvin, look at this. And Vance, that's the ball we were talking about, a softer ball, more arcing space. Now right here, Irvin's just gonna make a move, and it's a foot race like you said, and he's just able to out-athlete him, and even as fast as Frash is, isn't able to come over and make the play. Jermaine Irvin, touchdown. Goodness gracious. That was a very funky PAT, but it went through. 25 seconds remain in the third quarter, and the drillers now 21 14. So an interception back at the 40 yard line, and about four or five plays later, the drillers are in. Now, Vance, this is the first time the pressure has been put back on the Garces Rams, and let's see how they respond. You see right here, we're gonna see the touchdown play again. Now this time, see how the ball has more art? It's a softer pass, easy for the receiver to get under it. But then right there on Crony, Irvin makes a good move, and then right there, he's just gonna take away, take a run away and score easily. Sikowski was within reach early in the pursuit of Irvin and couldn't wrap him up or didn't make the dive to attempt it. And with Jermaine's speed, it's all over. You know, and that's exactly right, Vance. And 
when you go against guys, they're gonna see the interception again. There's the throw. Pause it right there for me if we can. Okay, this is an advantage to the defensive back. When you're playing top-notch corners, running fade routes against them is just easy money, Vance. You gotta go across the field on them. All right, so it's out of the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams and 25-6 left in. See, because when I'm in a great corner in high school, I want you to run fades, Vance, because I can use my athleticism and beat you 90% of the time. How, what you got to do against them is move them, run slants, get up and run across the field, give them a move deep and come back across the field and run away from them on drag. Because when you, you play into their strengths, when you just try to go fades on them. 21-14. 25 seconds left here in this third quarter. What a football game. Not a lot of people sitting down anymore, and there's a whole nother quarter to go. Adams hands the ball off to Crony Jr. Crony Jr. plows his way for about four yards. And... A helmet popped off of one of the players, so he has to leave the field for a moment, and that's, that's right. Kenny Truba. You know, good read right here, able to get up the field. I just like the way he runs through guys, Vance, and keeps that pad level down and is able to pick up positive yardage. We got a timeout. Quarter is over. We'll be back with a fourth quarter right after this. What a football game. Don't go anywhere. BHS up by a touchdown. At Bright House Networks, we don't want to be seen as just a cable company. We hope to be considered a friend, the kind of friend who's in your community, helping out where and when we can, and who can make rainy nights in better than a night out, the kind who lets you conquer worlds from your bedroom and bring old friends together even though they're worlds apart. That's just the kind of friend we are. Bright House. Hello, friend. I'm Amar, and I'm responsible for IT operations of 25 healthcare clinics. I'm Paula with Bright House Network's Business Solutions. We have an entire team standing behind Amar, ensuring he gets the exact dedicated fiber services he needs. We're ahead of the curve in healthcare with our electronic medical record system. We send information everywhere, even internationally. Our patient's care depends on guaranteed uptime, and that's unique to Bright House. Bright House Network's Business Solutions, where business gets personal. Welcome back, everybody. Fourth quarter is about to start. I'm Vance Palm. I'm next to Brian Adams. We're up on the scissor lift here with Super Sammy Bowman. We're knocking moths and bugs off each other's shoulders. Uh, and we have Edward Dick on another scissor lift, our boss. Senior producer director Bernie Johnson in the truck at the remotes. He's with Dave Farnes. And we have Carlos Sanguiano down on the grass. And here we go, the start of the fourth quarter. Ooh. And Crony Jr. brought down from behind. A nice tackle out there. And that's Bruce right there. Did you get that number for us? Yep, that's Bruce, number 30. Okay. That's Marcus Bruce. He's in his 34 in your program, Vance, but he's wearing 30. Oh, thank you, B. Appreciate that. So it's actually Marcus Bruce wearing 30. Couldn't get his earlier. And then Irvin's wearing number 18. He's not in the book or with his name on the back, but I certainly should have known who that was as he's running for a TD. We've seen him a lot. Yep, and that's courtesy of my man, Randy Robinson, the driller almanac. So you were able to dial in some info for us? I had to. Came I got it. Short. I got it. Adams looks, goes downfield, has a man wide open. Now it's another foot race. Can he get in? Oh, boy. From behind, will he get him? They won't. Touchdown, Rams. A big play, a big pass, and we may be tied up. And that was Angus Ballou. Vance and the move was off the line. He went outside, came back inside. See, runners straight up on the sideline, you play into their strengths. 
What a pass. Caught it in stride. So Cruz Adams, who was dinged up on the last series, hops up. See, he's going to stem outside. They fake. <coughs> so, therefore, they went for that and opened up that middle for Angus Ballou to get through. We're even now, partner. <laughs> Angus Ballou's crowd's over here. And we're on the Garza side, so we're right above the parents up on our scissor lift so we can see who's who. Here's the PAT. It's a big one, and that is good. So a couple of shaky PATs, but it still makes it a 21-21 to -21 ball game. Brian, this is the type of score that when they announce it at the other high schools around the city, it gets the old ooh. You know, but, Vance, that's what rivals are all the, rivalries are all about. You know, these drillers really haven't had a rivalry against anybody, so bringing back this Garza's tradition brings them back to a rivalry game. So now they're not used to being in this. They haven't really played anything in the atmosphere where you have a team that people say you're supposed to beat. And now here you are in a dogfight, and you don't, you, you're you going to see right now what kind of character this team has. So far this year, when they've gotten hit in the mouth, they've responded. But give Garces credit. We were talking about it at the quarter. Garces isn't through yet, and they came right out and made a big play. Okay, so the chess match <laughs> is on right now between Gola and Maples, the two head coaches. <coughs> Paul Gola, not from the area, didn't grow up as a local baseball and basketball and football player like Jimmy Maples, but he stamped his name all over this community since he's been here as the head coach of the Drillers, Jimmy Maples. Grew up here, made a name for himself here as a player and a coach, looking across the field at a coach at one of the all-time great schools. Fumble, 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 fumble! Fumble! Picked up by Conrad Kuntz. Uh-oh, partner. They haven't missed those fumbles early. They picked up on that one. Wow. Vance, here you go. Here's the kick. And Irvin's got the ball. Now, right here, he's looking to make a play. Now, see how the ball far away from his body? Very easy ball to strip. Great job right there. And then Garces recovers it. Got to have that ball tied in there. Tight into those pads, tucked in that corner. That can happen. Ten forty, ten forty nine remains in this fourth quarter. Cruz Adams behind the center. They give it to Crony Jr. and he's brought down at the twenty five yard line. A gain of about four. So, a costly turnover for the Drillers. Not just because it's deep in their own territory, but right after having a touchdown score on them you want to get out in the field you want to get out there and kind of get in your own groove and start your own pattern and uh now they just kind of have to muscle it out on defense now and try to get the football back well again i think garces has a lot of things going for them give garces credit they never abandoned the run that's what's been forcing the drillers to be uh have to stay at home and play smart football. And last time I said they faked that swing and allowed Blue to get underneath and inside the, the driller corners. Cruz goes for a hard count, and I think he might have got him. He might have got him, unless that coaching staff from BHS is able to talk to the officials and say, no, it was a ram that jumped, and I think it was. I think it was on the far side of the football field. That's what, to the naked eye, I thought I saw. Yeah, and I did sure too. Enough, I was with you on that one, Vance. I thought the officials did a good job of catching that. Sometimes you can give such a good hard count, your guy jumps. But, you know, one thing, why give the hard count in this situation? You're on a roll to go up and snap the ball and play. Now you're putting yourself at second and long. But they have confidence in themselves because they've gone on fourth downs too. But, again, you know, I just like you had a good rhythm. Don't break it up now. 9.47 and counting remaining in the fourth quarter. 21 to 21. This could go down as one of the most all-time watched game of the weeks on Bright House Networks. The crowds on both sides on their feet jumping. Adams pitches 
They're going to go to the air. Crony Jr. almost throws it away. Oh, boy. That could be one of the riskier plays with 9.28 left in the fourth. Uh, I'm not liking what Garth has done the last two times, Vance. You go for a hard count. There's nothing to really gain. And then you come Ooh. with a double, with a, with a toss sweep pass. And if you're going to throw a toss sweep pass, throw that for the home run. And let Don't the quarterback throw, it for throw a single. It. And let the quarterback yeah. throw it. <laughs> That's a single. Yeah, Don't okay. throw it for a single. Throw for the home run. Got it. Third and 12. The Rams haven't really capitalized yet on that big turnover. Nobody's back there with Adams. He's by himself. Three receivers to his left, two to his right. Crony in the slot on his right side. Here comes the pressure, Vance. Across the middle, and it's Pat. And it's short. caught. Frash catches it. He's about See, four yards short. That's great defense, and that's what I'm saying. That's what you go for the hard count. You put yourself, or you put, and they have a good field goal kicker too. So they don't think they can't make field goals as well. Even though I know we saw the last two plays shaky. But right there, good close right there by Greg on Frash. Able to stop them short of the first down. Now, if they're going for halfback passes, who knows? They might try a, a fake field goal here, Vance. Well, it looks as though it will be a 37-yarder, and now they call a timeout? now they look confused. Now they look confused, and we'll see how long they're going to get. They might have to hurry this thing up. 37 yards. Let's see what happens. They get it up. They get it off, and it is up, and it looks... Good from here. It's up and it's in. So Reed Robertson knocks it in. 24-21 with 8.21 left. So they have a good field goal kicker. So I knew they could get, that's why I said they could get through. They, both of them have good field goal kickers despite those PATs. But Vance, we've seen this before. You have opportunities to get sevens against the drillers. You can't get threes. You put yourself in a real bind where they can come back and make plays. Remember, a lot of these kids played last year. They were sophomores playing in those playoffs, and that playoff run going undefeated. So there's no, there no fear of them of coming back. Brian, we called a game right here in this scissor lift in the exact same spot last year when Centennial was up by 21, I think it was. And we both looked at each other and said, uh-oh. And then about... 40 minutes later, the Renegades are, they, I mean, sorry, the Drillers keep their undefeated season because of that poise, because right. it's that that mantra that Coach Gola, that Coach Gola puts in them about confidence, and, and I think we're about to see that here. Just keep it cool, boys. You know, one thing, fans, that I like what Gola does is he talks about the kids playing at certain levels. What level are you playing at, Vance? And he challenges each kid. But at the end of the day, all he wants is the win. Oh, goodness. Oh, it went out of bounds. Oh, man. It was about an eight iron. He just kind of punched and ran, and it kind of fell over into the 23-24-yard 23, area. But it was almost picked up by a Garces player. You need but that Phil Milkinson Tiger Woods spin back. It that, almost that had Vance it. That Palm spin back. Just spin it back to the hole. Ooh. Now that's going to really work out for the drillers and give them some really good field position here. So um, they tried to tried to do something interesting there on the kickoff with 8.19 left, up three. And now the drillers are gonna get to start at the 35 yard line. And again, Vance, the drillers are, have not really put anything together offensively to make you think that, right. hey, they're, they're really gonna make a challenge. But again, they got good field position. They're gonna be patient. And they're the kind of team that can just draw it, drive it down and see right there, five, six yards, and run six, seven minutes off a clock and score. Reddick, as Brian says, half of the first down picked up right there. And here comes Reddick right into your living room, right off the outside, off the guard in between the tackle, and he picks up a five yards. Nice, tough run. Seven forty-eight and counting. Rufus 
gets free. Rufus pitches to the outside. Oh, what a nice play that was. Still on his feet, goes out of bounds. Amicio Hill, but Rufus hung on to the very last second, kicked it out to Hill, and that's a nice play. And we're gonna see right here, Rufus is gonna keep it. Does a good, now Hill does a good job of running with him, Vance never quits on him, so he gives him an option to pitch. And then Hill does a great job of getting upfield, steps out right there, but nevertheless, great run. And the drillers have crossed the 50 yard line, and here they come, Vance. 7.37, the clock did stop. Reddick right behind Rufus. Rufus keeps it, brought down about maybe a half a yard loss. You know, this earlier this year, the Bakersfield High Football Hall of Fame dinner was held and the 2012 inductees, Jason Oliver, Rick Van Horn, Chad Provensall, Russell Hampton, Denny Schmidt, and Roger Smith were inducted. I know these are close friends of yours and colleagues. What a great, great 2012 class it was. Seven minutes. And at Garces defense starting to toughen up here as Rufus trying to make something happen and doesn't do it. You know, in those three in that back row, people can't see the pitcher. Jason um, Oliver, Rick Jason Van Horn, Chad Provensal. Chad Provensal mean a lot to me. Uh, all the battles we were in, the times we shared. Rick was our coach, but Jason and Chad and I have been on so many ball games together, so many fields, so many wars out there on that field. And I'm just so proud and, and happy for them to be in the Hall of Fame. 627 and counting. The Rams with a three point lead on a third and 10. A huge third and 10. Rufus is going to go to the air. Rufus floats one out. He has a man open, but it's overthrown. And it was down the sidelines. Oh boy, now it's fourth and 10. And Rufus took a hit, a big hit, as he went down and got rid of that football. So it's a fourth and 10. You know, and both quarterbacks, Vance. Let's give them an A on the grade for staying in the pocket and their toughness. Boom. Because a lot of routes they're running are with pump fakes and double moves. And you have to have time and be patient because you know a hit's coming. And they just you know right there, Rufus just barely threw it over Kevin's uh, arms. But can the drillers get the ball back? Vance and six minutes left to have another chance. Fourth and ten. The ball's at the, at the Rams 45-yard line. Let's see what Campbell does. He, he go ahead. He went ahead and punted it. And uh, oh, it's a beauty. What a nice punt. What a nice punt down to about the 13, 14 yard line. Nice job. Very, very nice directional punt. And the Rams now, if they can chew up some yards and knock some time off this clock. They're, they've, got the, they've got the deck of cards right now. Well, first they have to do is get some first downs. Right. And Coach Gola has two timeouts left, so he has plenty of time to stop the clock and do things like that. But I think the drillers, what you want to do right now is go three and out. See it, make them, make them run the ball on you, get them three and out. They may not take a chance on throwing a pass this far in their own territory, but you never know with, with Coach Jimmy Maples. Head Coach Jimmy Maples has Cruz Adams behind center. They pitch it. And it's a bad play as far as footing and direction, and it does not end up well for the Campbell. And that's the, the first good play for the Drillers, bad play for Garces. Let's see what Garces can do right now on this play. Are they going to be conservative? Will they fake a handoff and roll out and try to get Cruz in space so he can do the run or make a pass on that sideline? You see right there just a little slip and an easy tackle right there. I can't see what number is for the Drillers. But you don't get many easy tackles in that from the defensive player. Hunter Barnes is the running back. Five thirteen remaining in the fourth quarter. Crony gets out to about the five or six yard line or 10. Or I can't really see. They're so far down there. And we've got a speaker right in the way. So it's hard for me to get a beat on exactly where he is. So uh, 
We'll see. It's going to be a long third down, though. And BHS calls the timeout. And Carney did a good job just getting out of the end zone, fans, because the penetration from the drillers was awesome on that play. Four fifty-nine remains in the fourth quarter. It is shaping up to be a very, very drama-filled five minutes as the Rams have the ball deep in their own territory. And it's a third and 15, so it's going to be a big play call. They can't afford to give up anything crazy like an interception in that part of the football field. Could be run back for six. So there's a, a, a lot to think about here. And there's a long time between timeouts and first downs and decision making when you're in practice it in July and August but when it's time to get out in the field after the play call boy time goes really quickly these guys are already back out there they're looking at what they have to do Cruz Adams is the quarterback for the Rams he's had a really good night tonight a couple of big plays big touchdown pass just earlier and now this is a big big third and 15 for both teams Let's see what head coach Jim Maples and his coaching staff have been able to draw up. And let's see what coach Gola and his staff are able to do to stop it. Here we go. Third and 15, 459, remaining in the fourth. Adams in the shotgun. Going to roll to his left. Launch one. It's deep. Does he have a man? Oh, and a great play. It's broken up at the very end by Hayes. It's hard to complete plays. But notice, though, this time he had a better chance. Remember I was telling you, Vance, is get inside of him and then move back out. See how he got inside real quick on the blur, and then he comes back out. Great throw by Cruz. But right here, just a heck of a, heck of a play there <laughs> by Hayes. And that's a big-time play. But that's what he is. He's a big-time player, Vance. And, again, what I would not do is let him touch this ball, Vance, on a punt because he has the ability to run it right back and put you down 20, 27, 26. I mean, 27 24 right away well if that catch is made if that pass is complete boy that's a game changer right there sure but is. it wasn't it wasn't so here comes the punt from Cruz Adams he's standing in, with his heels on the end zone perfect snap does he get a good one off he does is it returnable we'll see it takes a bounce where does it go does it hit a driller that went under the legs, I think, of a driller. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Darius Dallas barely missed it. And the coach saying, you got to listen, but you got to give a clear. We talk about this all the time. If I'm the return man, I want to make sure, especially in this situation, out of the way, out of the way. But drillers have good field position. And let's see, Vance. Ooh, he barely missed it. Man, oh man, oh man. All right, look at this. 441. And the handoff is to Reddick. Reddick's got some room, and now we're talking about that driller line, how good a shape they may be in, and it could be one right here in the trenches at the very end. Well, now if you're Garces, you just got to hold and now, Vance, force them to kick a 40-something yard field goal. So Even though we know Parker Campbell can do it, but force them to kick the long field goal and tie you up and see if you can't get this thing into overtime. If you can't call the turnover now. First and 10. Rufus throws to his left, throws it, has a man wide, wide open. open. What a play. Touchdown drillers. What a play. Touchdown, Blake Logan. Wow. Okay. Uh, great, great play call. Great play call, great execution. And give Rufus, just like we have to give Cruz Adams credit, they haven't been on target much tonight on these deep passes, but they've made, them, made the throws when they counted, and Rufus threw a great ball right there. Just allowing the receiver to come on, he can get it. And easy pitch and catch. Touchdown, Drillers.
No good. No good. Well, partner. Wow. We've seen the last kick kind of go off, and this one doesn't go in, and he's Mr. Automatic, but again, I don't know if we have a replay on it, but uh, we're set up now. Garces has plenty of time, two timeouts. They drive the ball, they kick a field goal, we have a tie game, or they have plenty of time to come down and score and win. 4-15. And here's a replay of the touchdown, partner. Just going to go right up the middle. Great patience by Rufus to throw the ball up. And nobody man, oh man. gets the running back come out of the backfield. They lose sight of him. And Hill's going to get an easy touchdown. And we talked about this earlier. You can't kick threes against the drillers. You put yourself in that situation, man, for them to come back and score touchdowns. And they've done this for the last few years under the Gola era. You know, Angus Ballou got free on his big touchdown, Vance. Corner got caught looking in the backfield, watching the swing pass. He was able to get underneath them and get in space. And then there you go where linebackers missed their read and lost their man. Here's the kickoff. It's a high one. And we had one turnover by the Rams. It was an interception. Um, and the touchdown incurred after that. But other than that, the Rams have played some really solid football, taking care of the football. The Drillers have had at least four fumbles and a couple of interceptions, but they're out front right now, 27-24. Here's another look at that play, and he just, it was just well executed and just, just a wide open little pitch and catch touchdown. And with 4.15 now, the Rams will start on what they hope is an 80 yard journey to pay dirt or at least a field goal to send our Bright House Network boys into overtime. All right, Crony Jr. standing to the right of Cruz Adams. Adams takes oh, a look, flushed again. out. Oh, and he had some room over there on the right side to Crony Jr. Had he been able to get it to him and get him out on the flats, Crony could have done what he needed to do. No, Vance. He had the same read he had early on the big touch of town to blue, and Frash is going to go wide open, but they were looking the other way. They were looking at Crony on the other side, but they had that same swing, and then that receiver popping down the, the seam. Well, I mean, it'd be nice to see a little screen play right here. If you're a Garces fan, if you're a Driller fan, you want to see a sack. Yeah, the Drillers are hard to screen on, though, Vance, because yep. they kind of come in waves. They don't all come together. But here's that bunch formation, and let's see what Garces can do. Adams can't get loose, and he's thrown for a loss, and the clock will tick below four minutes right now. And you got Kevin Hayes over there on the far sideline cramping up a little bit. Now, if I'm the coaching staff and I'm seeing them cramping up, we got to take it. I was telling you, you don't go after them, but this is when you got to go after them if you see them gipping a little bit and maybe may not be able to run. Big crowd. Nobody's left, obviously. Standing all in the end zones, all around the sides of the fields. And here it is, for all intents and purposes, the biggest third down of the season so far for the Rams. Third and 10, they come at Adams hard. Adams floats one up, gets it free. What's gonna happen? And they get tangled up, no flags called, it's incomplete. Now see Vance, this time you gotta give Irvin credit. He doesn't go for the play in the backfield, the swing, see? Last time he went for the swing. This time he said, you know what, I gotta lock my guy up. He went for 80 last time, and let me just play good position. Great coverage. There's that no call right there. I mean, Jimmy can call for that one. That, that one, Jim, is just good football. Well, it's going to be about clock management now for the drillers. We see another angle from up high, and uh, nah, you're right. That's just a, a dead heat for the football, and 
unable to get to it. So a fourth down, Cruz Adams is going to have to punt this football. The Garces faithful, hoping that something magical can happen here. High snap, Adams gets it, and it's barely, he barely got it off. I can't believe it wasn't blocked. Parker Campbell almost got a body on that thing. Forget about hands, he almost blocked it with his whole chest. So now the drillers have really, really good field position, and some of the drillers down there popping off a little bit, letting right. letting the Rams fans know that they that they're they winning. First down, you know they're first down away from Salt and South. But here's what they got to do, though, Vance. Garces has to force them into a running situation. And here's the thing with Coach Golden. We've seen this. When you think he's going to run in a situation like this. He will sneak a pass on you and try to open it and finish the game off. But look for four and nine to have the ball, but he's not opposed to doing something in this situation knowing he has to run. They go to Reddick. Now there's the first one and here's the timeout. So Maples calls the first timeout with 3.03 remaining. And good job right there by the Garces defense. Give them check right there for winning the first down, executing very, very well. Short to no gain, Vance. Timeout, 3.03 left. They need another quick stop like this and another timeout. And they still should be able to get the ball with more than two minutes left. 3.03 remains, 27-24. High school football game of the week on Bright House Network. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Brian Iams. We're uh, having a fantastic time tonight. Good, good night for football. And a big, big old rivalry renewed now after a few years of not playing. And with the Drillers having a three-point lead and the football, and it's a second and ten. The scoreboard says first and ten, but we know it's a second and ten. And uh, here we go. Rufus has Reddick behind him, a strong left side. Reddick goes in motion. You're right, Brian. They go to the air. They go to the same play again. And, Brian, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. They went back to the same play and iced it. Advanced after. I've watched him enough games and know how he's, he's coached in these situations. And he just has a way of sucking you up, looking for that run. And you're expecting run, and he comes out and pass. Now, Vance, this might be his best pass of the night. You know what I'm saying? Because there was much room for him to throw that ball in there, that window. He throws a good pass. Another touchdown from here. Like you said, same pass. This time, linebacker reads it, but can't make a play. And they chant, go home, Vance. Thirty-nine twenty-four. Oh. Um, I, I mean, I'm not the best mathematician, but twenty-seven and seven is thirty-four where I come from. And they must have heard you. I looked up there. I said it. You said it. Bernie, our director, said it. And the clock still can't get thirty-four on there. One more, one more. <laughs> it was 27-24 and they just scored. So there it is, 34-24. The scoreboard operator may not have gone to BHS. What? Cause he should have had 34 up there real quick. Well, it's a 10 point lead for the drillers. Well played football game by Garces, but now things are a bit dicey. If they can strike instantly on this kickoff return, but with Parker Campbell putting it in the air, I doubt it. It's up and it will go in the end zone. So it'll be first and 10. The 25-yard line for the Rams. They do have 256. That is a doable 
time frame for them to get on the board at least, but they then have to get the football back. Well, Vance, with the game where it is now, Vance, and the Gola team, I mean, crazier things have happened in football, but the way he coaches teams and the way they play, I will tell you this, they have to play better than this going into next week. The team they're playing is, is a different caliber than this, and it could be maybe they were overlooking them, like he said, a trap game, but I didn't see things that show me that they're really, really ready for next week. But the great thing about it is you have a week of practice. Adams taken down on a keeper, another big hit. So Cruz gets up. He's had a big night tonight, but he's also been hit hard a few times. Here's an instant replay we show you here. I don't and know. there's the pressure, Vance, and there's nowhere to go, and he's going to go down easy. And that's this Shaquille again. Shaq's played a big game. You know, Shaq, Shaq would be the guy, man, that I would say is, is my guy that I say is my gamer tonight. Because he has made play after play, Vance, on that defensive line. 2.15 remaining in the fourth. Adams in the shotgun. Adams takes a look, throws another one up there. This time it is out onto no man's land. Look for Sweeney. Baloo's out there too, incomplete. Brings up third and nine. Vance, he's gonna throw this up. He has two receivers going down at this point in time, both well covered, and that's just gonna be an incomplete pass. Third and nine. Adams has Crony Jr. to his right. Has receivers split out wide on both sides. The drillers look like they're gonna come at him, and they do, and it's Reddick coming with most of the pressure. This ball is intercepted. intercepted. In and out of the hounds of Ballou, and that'll do it. Jermaine Irvin. And he's coming up just a little hobble, but Irvin's had himself a nice football game as well, and in and out of the hounds of a Ram, and into the hands of Irvin. And, and this uh, great job, Vance, of concentrating and paying attention to the to the ball. And like I said, defensively, you know, the, the drillers have played pretty decent defensively. They had the big play they gave up on the run with Crony and the big pass play, and that was just a miscue. But overall, defensively, they're being asked to do a lot. Can the offense start a game, Vance? like they've been finishing, because that's what they need. They need these guys to come out next week and be on fire. Exactly two minutes left in the football game, and wouldn't you know it, a flag. Yeah, Mr. Hayes over there moving. To slow so this thing back. down. Partner, it was a heck of a ball game, though, Partner. Ooh. You couldn't ask for a better matchup. An article in the, in the paper this morning set up for a great game, and they played a great game. Another pitch, and uh, this time it's out to Dallas. Dallas knocked down. The clock will continue to tick. And Vance, I'm going to tell you, there's some people watching this game, and you got Garces on your schedule coming up. You're going to be in for some problems because this team can play football. BHS will be at Long Beach Poly, as Brian was referring to, next week. And as you mentioned, Brian, the Rams are going to be <laughs> a tough, tough Friday night every time they play. Clock continues to tick. Reddick trying to break free. Can't do it. And we're below the minute mark. Yeah, 
And there you go, partner. And next week, everybody, uh, the Garces Rams will not be playing on Friday night. We'll have a Bright House Networks high school fo football game of the week Friday night. And then the very next night will be Saturday night, the Holy Bowl, played here in Bakersfield. I will not be with you. I'll be on the road calling a Renegades game. But Brian is going to call that football game with none other than our buddy Corey Costello. Well, that'll be a great fun night. And knowing now that we're coming back to going on Saturday, that'll be pretty awesome. So Corey Costello is going to step in for me and hang out with you for the Holy Bowl. Hey, look at this. We're done, everybody. What a nice football game. What a really nice game. 34 to 24. The Drillers come away with a big victory to remain 3-0 and as they go on the road next week to Long Beach Poly. And the Rams played really well, and they're giving their guys a nice big standing ovation and letting them know, too. So on behalf of our director, Bernie Johnson, and all the crew here, Dave Farnes, Edward Dix, Sammy Bowman, Carlos Sanguiano, and Brian Adams, I am Vance Palm. Have a great weekend, good night, and God bless. Drillers win.